Hi there, marketing research students and SBSS users. This is the first introductory uh, YouTube video introducing you to the data set that we will be using in these videos to uh, learn some basic uh, recoding skills, uh, basic functionality of SPSS, some data visualization, and various statistical tests. Let me uh, start off by telling you that the data set we're using here is called the Spring 2014 Craft Beer 200 Random uh, Subset YouTube Tutorial. What this file is, is a random subset uh, of 200 cases that comes from a much larger sample that uh, SDSU students collected about craft beer consumption amongst San Diegans and people in the surrounding area. It's also called a subset for a second reason, uh, being that if we go to variable view here, we'll see that there is only 43 variables in this particular data set. Uh, this is only a tiny subset of all the variables uh, and all the questions that were asked in the complete questionnaire. I've reduced both the total size of the data set in terms of n and the number of variables in these tutorials to simplify the, the visualization and the tutorials as we move through on the YouTube video. So let's introduce ourselves to some of the characteristics of this particular data set. I'll walk through quickly uh, some of the various uh, nature of these uh, variables. First, we have the Qualtrics response ID. We use the online data collection um, and survey generation software Qualtrics to collect the data. The response ID is a random identification number given to every single participant that ever takes a, a survey in Qualtrics. So this is the unique ID code across the entire Qualtrics system. We had three screening questions that we asked in the survey, whether they had alcohol, beer, and specifically craft beer, at least once in the last three months. Every single participant in this particular subset of data said yes to the uh, craft beer question, meaning we're only analyzing people who indicated they drank craft beer at least once in the last three months. And if we go to data view, we can quickly see, sure enough, we have a column filled with ones here. That's not the case in the full data set. Obviously, not every single person had a craft beer. We also have some information about how much they estimate they spend every week on craft beer, their age, marital status, employment status, their monthly household income. Since we knew that we were studying uh, a lot of college uh, drinking, uh, drinking, uh, dr drinking age college students in this sample, you'll notice that we captured quite a few uh, sort of lower monthly household income buckets here. Uh, and then we, we ended at $6,000 or more. This would not be typical if we were doing uh, in the general population. We have some indications of whether or not a particular participant was a member of uh, various uh, SDSU organizations. <clears throat> we didn't use this exact language in the survey instrument. We didn't ask, uh, but we use sort of shorthand here in the labels of the SPSS software to make it easiest for her to understand. Next, we asked a series of subjective knowledge questions. So basically, we're asking people how much they believe they know about craft beer. And again, you can tell by looking at the value column here that we used a Likert scale uh, to measure these items. We asked someone if they consider themselves a craft beer enthusiast. Uh, in addition, we had four uh, objective questions that tested the actual knowledge that someone had about beer, uh, craft beer, and beer production. We don't have those four individual questions in the subset, but we do have a recoded value. Notice you'll see the word underscore recode at the end of the variable name, meaning that at some point previously, I had created these values from other variables. We have a score from zero to four at how that person scored on that particular test. So four meaning they got all every question right. There weren't too many fours. We have their, uh, their gender. We have the dollars that they're willing to pay between Stone and Bud Light. Uh, what this question is with that, the respondents were shown two images. One was a six pack of bottles of Bud Light beer. Another was a six pack of bottles of Stone Levitation Ale, a craft beer. We asked them the following question. Uh, imagining that they were buying a six pack of beer either for themselves or for their friends, uh, how much would be the maximum they'd be willing to pay for each particular six-pack of beer while <clears throat> while uh, still considering it a good value? So, for example, if someone said they'd be willing to pay $8 for a stone beer uh, six-pack and $6 for a Bud Light six-pack, we would see a value of two here because this, this particular column is a recode that measures the difference between those two uh, other variables. We have their ethnicity captured. Uh, we also have this column here called poor data risk. 
um, some other data like exploration that I've done previously that we need not just discuss here at this point. Uh, we flagged some various situations where respondents may have not been honestly taking the survey. So this happens a lot in online questionnaires where, for example, one very common thing you look out for is straight lining behavior where a respondent uh, answers the exact same thing to numerous questions, particularly questions where you know it would be seemingly incoherent for them to answer the same way to the same one. So we did a various a series of flags to indicate whether or not someone might have uh, engaged in dishonest or inaccurate um, responses. And right here, we set a rule for this particular subset, poor data risk, so I'm going to go back to data view. We go over to that column. You'll notice that in this particular subset, it's all zeros, meaning that this particular subset of 200 cases, nobody in this subset met any of the conditions that we had for data risks. That doesn't mean all the data is great. It just means it didn't meet any of the most obvious flags and criteria. Next, we have some measurements about their preference, stated preference for a variety of different non-San Diego craft breweries. That's brewpref underscore C1 recode to C8 recode. And then their preference for uh, San Diego breweries, SD1 underscore recode all the way to SD8 underscore recode. So we measured here uh, for each one of these, for example, Sam Adams, Sierra Nevada being non-San Diego craft breweries, Ballast Point, and Carl Strauss being San Diego craft breweries. In all cases, we have scores from 0 to 1 to 2. Zeros indicating they said that they do not prefer the brewery or have no opinion about it. These were asked independently, two options were asked independently in the full survey. In this recode, we collapse them into one category. Uh, one means they somewhat prefer, and two means they strongly prefer. Finally, we have another question, uh, another variable recoded called subjective knowledge merge recode. And what this did is it takes the previous six subjective knowledge questions that we had asked and merges them into a single indicator, uh, taking the average of those previous six values uh, and correctly flips one of the questions, which is a reverse scored item. Okay, so that's the basic introduction to our data set. I'm going to stop here, and we're going to dive back into actually uh, selecting cases and recoding some of these data, uh, this data under a set of criteria next.